uh, I'm Jaime Bustos. I'm uh, the Managing Director for uh, Procurement Process in the Mine side. I'm Sebastian Carmona. I'm the Chief Innovation Officer of Podelco. If we go from the corporate level, uh, if, if we take this $8 billion, you know, that we buy, uh, so I'll bring it from, from a high level to, you know, a more granular, granular level, about $2 billion will be projects. So it will be probably contracts that we do with suppliers, EPC world, you know, engineering, procurement, and construction of, of projects that we need for our mines. So that'll be about $2 billion a year. So about another $2 billion will be energy and, and water services, you know, and the rest, the other, you know, 5 or $4.5 billion will be probably two-thirds services. And the services that we buy, um, we buy transportation services, catering, uh, MRO, maintenance repairs and operation services for either plants or equipment. So um, we have big Canadian companies like Thinning, which is a distributor of Caterpillar, that give us services in our, in our mind. So we have uh, those, those type of spends. We report to a CPO and he has uh, functional uh, procurement departments in each of our divisions. We have eight divisions in, in Codelco and uh, mine, mine sites. And we have a director of procurement in, in each of those mines, and they all report to the CPO. And at the corporate level, we have uh, four, four managing directors uh, that report to him too and give services to the mines. And I'm one of them, uh, and I work in the, mines, in the mine process. We have the plant process, and we have other services uh, that, that also give uh, you know, support to the mines. We have a, a logistics service uh, that you know, hires and, and all the companies to help us move our materials between the mines and our warehouses. And we have uh, an operational service managing director that is in charge of procurement, carrying, and transportation services for you know, our employees in the mines. So that's the way we organize. Something really important about doing mining in Chile is that 90% of the mining in Chile is open pit copper assets. So it's Codelco here. We also have Antofagasta PLC here. We have BHP Viditum with Escondida, Spence and Cerro Colorado. We have Anglo American with Los Bronces. So we have, uh, we have Glencore with Coyahuasi. So we have quite a few large assets and they're all facing similar challenges. I, I, I don't want to say we're working together because that's not the case. So there's a lot of synergy once you get into business with one of the mines, because they're all very similar. Mining has been around for, as I said, more than, I mean, 500 years. Two of Codelco mines have been around for more than 100 years. And if you see our resources, and we have hundreds of years ahead of resources. Now the challenge is, so it's not about exploration. It's about how to tra we transform those resources that are just lying there. What are the technologies that are going to help us transform those resources into reserves and into copper or into gold or the other minerals? Uh, we produce around 1.7 million tons of copper per year, which is 9% of the global output. Uh, all, our, all our mines are based in Chile, and, uh, and a couple of mines have more than 100 years old. So, so we have been in business for, for quite a long time. Codelco officially was created a little more than 40 years ago. It's a state-owned company, and we enjoy what we do here, I think. I think that, you know, get to know the supplier, it's, you know, always uh, have face-to-face -face meetings and, you know, get to know what they do and what they've done for other companies and what can you know, how their product can fit and relate to the needs that we have is always important. And I think that, and you know, I think uh, EDC has done a great job doing that. You know, I participate in many conferences through, you know, the, the past years. When you bring suppliers, I mean, you, you reach the, the companies that, that you have like Codelco, you know, and trying to make that match between suppliers that are in Canada and, and our needs, and you get them to talk to 
not only to you know the procurement managers or managing directors, but also the end user. Kodak is a big company, so you know if you already uh, knock on the door, you just keep you know keep insisting. You know uh, I've seen many success stories and. You know that that companies that got into Codelco and start growing, going with us, and especially from Canada too. So you know, don't give up. That will be my my advice. You know, another another thing that I will say is that don't be afraid to ask. You know, uh, for specific questions. You know, we're state owned, but our our information. You know, especially for suppliers that need it, is not private. You know, we want to share with you, so we'll give you the the equipment that we have the needs that we have in terms of parts and repair services and you know and you can see if there's a match with providers or suppliers in Canada that can provide those services so I will do that if I were an entrepreneur in Canada. In Chile it's very hard to say no. The way we are, the way we are we, for us it's hard to say no. It's hard to say you know what I'm not interested. Uh, we try to talk around that and so 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 I would say that and that can be misleading especially to a supplier he can say you know what send me an email a couple of weeks and then I'm going to reply to you and then you send that email and you get no traction and and I said my advice to that is that you send one email it doesn't get traction then you send the second email it doesn't get traction then maybe hold on for a few months uh, sometimes it's just not the right time for that idea. Sometimes just it's just that the mine has a bottleneck in somewhere else, or they have a strike, or they have a, a fire, or they have another issue. And so, so it's not. A, and don't don't lose confidence on your idea or in your product. It's just that sometimes you have to wait a few months or a few years for the right time for that need to be addressed. Especially in Codelco, we have deployed a strategy of trans full transparency. So we as executive. We hardly accept any dinner, we don't accept any gifts, nothing. Uh, we have this innovation process to try new ideas and solutions, but then we have a pretty clear and standard procurement process. And every single one in the world can log in, see what options or tenders are there, and compete. It's very, you know, difficult to engage with suppliers where they, ha they don't have the presence, you know, especially in the, in, the in the case of Codelco, since, you know, you can reach headquarters, but you need to be at the mines, you know, and we can help with that, you know, trying to bring end users and, and, and suppliers to, to one common point and, and have those conferences. So those, that's, I'll say that's the most valuable thing that, that I've seen done by EDC. No, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. You know, we're a big company. So independent of being state-owned or not, you know, Codelco is still, you know, a $15 billion, uh, revenue company. So it has a lot of, uh, not bureaucracy, but it has a lot of uh, diverse buying. So one supplier can get lost, you know, trying to push their product or, or their solution into Codelco, you know. So... Uh, but I'll say that our procurement, it's fairly well organized in terms of getting to suppliers and bring them their solutions into, uh, into the company. So the supplier uh, managers that we have and the procurement people in the divisions and in, in headquarters are fairly approachable uh, and willing to help. I mean, it's going to be harder from Canada to do business because probably we're going to ask for specific things. But uh, it's, it's pretty common and it depends, right? It depends. It depends on what we need. If we're going to buy a meal, probably we're not going to do a lot of the divisions. If we're going to buy a, or trucks or $50 million equipment, yes. But we're going to buy sensors to try something that is not probably not that much. See, so it depends. But my invitation is for you, to go, for you guys to look what's on this, just opening the website to see, to register yourself, to see what you want and, uh, and, and just compete. And the approach I would recommend, you know, let's say that, that uh, identify what type of solution or product you're trying to, you know, uh, uh, get to serve Codelco, right? So if this is a mine-related product, this is a service-related product or, or, or a plan-related product. So find what type of the, the business are you trying to help, right? 
and then concentrate your efforts, you know, in in where that that product can do, you know, best for Codelco in terms of their, you know, operations. It could be, you know, in, in one mine specific or it will be abroad, you know, many mines, you know. So once you have figured that out with the help of procurement, if you will, you know, uh, you know, we can decide if to do a mine approach where you go to a mine uh, visit and, and, and see, you know, how can your product can interact with our operations and to talk to the procurement guys in headquarters, if you will. You know, so I'll, I'll say it's a two-pronged approach, you know, and we can help any company with that. Uh, what we do is we bring the operations to headquarters to meet in Santiago to make it more, you know, valuable for the, for, for the Canadian companies that visit us. So we've done that a couple of times you know, in each year, so they can have that opportunity to to meet the people in the mine without going to the mine, right? And if they see value and they see interest, you know, and and the suppliers think that it's worth worthwhile to go to the mine, we can arrange visits, you know, to go to the mine site specifically. I'll say that you you're number one in terms of you know the support that you give to the companies and. Very close to you is Australia, you know, because we're mining uh, uh, countries, you know, uh, and they're fairly well organized and giving this support. And the other thing that 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 I'll, I'll mention is that, you know, we are especially with the companies that you represent. We're since we're moving to underground, um, you know, and and you have uh, you know experience there, like Sudbury area, you know. We can see a lot of companies that are working in solving problems that are the same problems that we're facing in their underground mines. In order for us to get into the long term, we need to be able to be productive in the short term, right? So we as an innovation team also focus on providing short term solutions to our operations. And those short-term solutions are not going to come from universities, are not going to come from papers. They are going to come from suppliers. And in that sense, we have focused on short-term. We also focus on several things that I think most mining companies focus. Improving or increasing the throughput, improving and increasing recovery of copper, molybdenum, and other uh, byproducts. <sighs> Monitoring the conditions of our conveyor belts which are a bottleneck for us. Um, water efficiencies, improving also the KPIs of our mobile, mobile equipment, meaning we need trucks that are faster, we need shovels that are stronger, and we need to push for that. And every single incremental innovation that we deploy in that sense is going to make a lot of money today for us. Uh, so that, that's what I'm saying, that we have a short-term strategy that is looking for efficiencies, and, and bringing the top suppliers to help us with our technical challenges. And long term, which is we, we work also with, with suppliers, but mostly with universities and research centers. We have uh, new equipment that we're buying uh, from uh, LHDs. Uh, so we'll need to uh, give, uh, you know, uh, repair services, MRO, uh, maintenance repairs and overhaul to new equipment that we didn't used to have. Uh, the equipments that we had in our mine, in, in an open mine, uh, open pit mine, they need to be refurbished and probably reused in different mines. So all those services that we didn't have before, were, because we're transforming our operations, you know, uh, we didn't source before, and we need efficient suppliers that help us do that transformation. And uh, we're hoping that they come from a lot of them come from Canada. So. There's a lot of needs for MRO and sourcing parts for new equipment that we're buying. So if I were an a Canadian entrepreneur, you know, I'll take a look at the equipments and the needs that Codelco has to buy pieces, parts, and repair services. And I'll go back to the Sudbury area, you know, where probably there are maintenance and repair uh, providers that are already supplying that and I'll try to match the need that Coelho has with what they're doing right in, in, in Canada and once I find the match you know I probably contact this Codelco webpage 
and I will contact me right in this case and and you know try to come up with services on repair that I can you know provide to to the specific area of the business so we have managers in procurement or the end user might have a need we, we needed to automize one one uh, you know um, one machine inside the underground mine and you know uh, a few weeks after that need surfaced, uh, we had a conference with, with one of your companies and, and sponsored by EDC, and we were able to match them and do a meeting, a three-way meeting between the supplier that needed the automation, our end user, and one company from Canada that was providing that, that service. So, you know, uh, that's the way it happens. Uh, we have a whole department on innovation uh, that you're talking to, that department is just looking for innovation or suppliers, right? And, and incrementally and, and also disruptive. So uh, we are, and, and by saying that, I'm trying to tell you that we're looking for the value that provide, uh, suppliers can provide to, to Codelco aggressively. So uh, it's, it's good that you deliver this, mes mes uh, this message to uh, your Canadian uh, folks because you know what that's what we're looking for. We have a strong commitment, commitment with long term but because of the copper price and because of the technical challenges that we're facing today we're also very focused on short term right now. I mean we have an R&D budget and we are very strong on that but right now most of our operations need help from new suppliers and, and we need uh, the support and partnership from technical guys that can help us with solutions and, and as I said, this is, this is quite straightforward because most of the challenges that we have on the short term are very similar to every single mine in the world. So every single solution that you have, for example, to control dust, uh, we are gonna want it because we need that. Uh, any single solution that you, that you have uh, to, to look for water efficiencies, we need it because we don't have much water for a processing plant. So if water becomes a bottleneck, one more liter of water that we save is gonna, be, is gonna mean an increase in copper production. We are in a position and we're in a, in, in a transformation plan to help us reduce, reduce those costs and get to the first quartile. And, uh, and our procurement department and organization is aligned with that goal. So what we're trying to find is suppliers again, provide innovation and cost reductions um, that makes our operation more efficient. So that's what we're looking for. Not only you help us a lot on the financial side, but also, you know, bringing suppliers. So we really see a partnership with you and we're very appreciative of that.